Hello, welcome to a new session from, I don't know, is it the machine learning course? Is it the programming with text course? I don't know, I'm just here. I'm just the person who's here. And this session, which will be a whole bunch of videos, is about a topic, word to vec. <laughs> I'm ringing the bell way too much. Um, so uh, first of all, I wanna mention something very important. I, I've known about word to vec and uh, I've used it in projects for a little while, but I don't think I ever really understood it. <laughs> and I don't even know that I really do understand it, but I, I definitely improved my understanding of it vastly after reading this amazing tutorial by Allison Parrish. Uh, it's uh, posted as a gist on GitHub. Uh, it's a Python notebook, Understanding Word Vectors by Allison Parrish. You know, honestly, if, if I'm being truthful, you should just stop this video right now and read this instead. But you know, if you... <laughs> Some people seem to like to listen to me prattle on, which is fine. You can keep watching if you so choose. Read this after then, at the very least. Um, and so this uh, tutorial is uh, uh, um, released under Creative Commons by 4.0 license. The code itself is the Creative Commons Zero license. So you can reuse this material, which is what I'm doing right now. I don't usually do this. I mean, I'm all, stuff is always based on other people's stuff. But this, this first video, I'm really going to like talk through what's in this tutorial in my own words. Um, but um, if you do the same, please uh, reference with attribution um, according to the license. Okay, um, so I also want to mention that Allison Parrish has a wonderful uh, talk. It's on YouTube. I will link to it called Experimental Creative Writing with the Vectorized Word from a, the Strange Loop Conference. So I also encourage you to, to take a look at that as inspiration and background for what it is I want to show you. My end goal with this tutorial is to get to the point where I have a P5 JavaScript sketch in the browser where I can do stuff with word to vec. I mean, what is word to, the, the point of this video that you're watching right now, which I'm taking a very long time to start, is just to answer the question, what is word to vec? By the end of it, I want to use word to vec in projects to make weird stuff happen with text on a web page. All right. How are we feeling? So, all right. So let's, let me come over here for a second because uh, I've written word to vec up here and that's going to help me. The idea of word to vec and uh, there's the, this is a machine learning process, similar to other things that I've done that looked at like classification. Is this image a cat or a dog? Or a regression analysis. What's the, what's, can you predict the price of this house based on certain properties of that house? These are classic machine learning examples. Word to vec is a particular machine learning model that produces something called a word embedding. Now what a, that's a very, very fancy term. And what it means is that any given word, like apple, can be associated with numbers, a vector. This, we can basically somehow come up with this sort of like numeric mathematical essence of this word as some array of numbers, like uh, 0 0.7 and 1.2 and negative 0 0.345, et cetera, et cetera. And there's going to be some amount of numbers in here. This seems like a crazy thing. Why would I ever want to have a word associated with an array of numbers? Well, one of the things that one can do with arrays of numbers is math, linear algebra, multiplying, subtracting, averaging, adding. So we know we can do that with arrays of numbers. And this is the kind of thing that happens in lots of my other tutorials with programming graphics and pixel processing and machine learning. But one thing we wouldn't know how to do is how would we say, you know, apple plus, I was gonna say plus orange, but that could be, I was trying to like come up with something, a good example. This is what happens when you don't plan these tutorials in advance, I have to come up with an example on the fly. Apple plus, uh, purple, Would the, could this equal plum maybe? <laughs> right, like in other words, like I'm trying to come up with some like pseudo math, like let's take these two words and add them together, like cat plus cute, maybe that equals kitten. <laughs> and can I take, and like we're not talking about concatenation, apple purple, we're saying apple plus purple. Could I get the sort of mathematical essence of these words, add them together and get a new word? Well, the theory, the prompt, the idea here, that the argument that I, that I am making to you is that word to vec is a mechanism by which you can do stuff like this right there in your code. If I could quantify the word apple as a series of numbers and I could quantify the word purple as a series of numbers, then couldn't I just add all those numbers together? 
I would get a new series of numbers, and then I might look and find which word or has a set of numbers that is most close to these set, this set of numbers. How could I find the similarity? I could calculate a similarity score between any two sets of numbers. I could find the word that has the most similar to this plus this, and maybe it would be plum. Why would it be plum? Is that magic? Is it because of what data this word defect model is trained on? Oh, well, yes, it's the latter. But, and so I want to get to all of that. OK, this is my sort of like zoomed out view of why we're doing this. Let's come over and look at what Allison has in her particular tutorial here, which, are, which is a really nice example. Um, if I look at this, we can say like, well, imagine like a really simple case, right? I was sort of saying over here, each word gets a list of maybe 100 numbers. Maybe it's 300 numbers. Maybe it's 1,000 numbers. This is up to us to sort of figure out, decide based on what we're trying to do. But what if we simplify that? And here's Allison's example where each word gets essentially two numbers. And those numbers are data properties of that word, like a cuteness score from 0 to 100 and a size from 0 to 100. So you can see kitten is 95.15. A hamster is 80, 8, right? There are these numbers that sort of like the label is tied to a set of data point, data properties. So if that's the case, then we can look, we could graph all of those, and we could say something like, oh, you know, like a horse and a dolphin are kind of like similar in terms of size and in terms of size and cuteness. Um, and then we can start to do things, by, but actually like we could do a mathematical analysis. Like what is the actual Euclidean distance? Euclidean distance means the number of, well, in this case, pixels or units between these two uh, words right here. These are very similar because they're physically close to each other. And we can also do things, you can think of those as, uh, um, and this is a nice demonstration of this idea. This is why we, we talk about it as vectors, right? I have a whole set of tutorials about vectors describing as describing uh, points in space. So for example, a vector, a velocity vector, if I have a particle in a particle system and I want it to go from here to here, this is its velocity, its change in location. In essence, this is basically what I'm doing with an operation like this. For example, what if I said, okay, well, apple is over here, and then I'm going to add purple to it. I'm gonna move by purple's numbers, and over here, I now find plum. So when we look at this in two dimensions, it kind of makes, a, we can sort of like, un, our brains can understand that. Two dimensions is like the easiest dimension. I mean, I actually find two dimensions to be easier than one dimension. One dimension's weird sometimes. So what Allison is showing here is by moving from, let's say, one word to another word physically in space, we can establish this idea of word relationships. Chicken is to kitten as tarantula is to hamster. Now this is all very arbitrary with like hard-coded word vectors. So the, but this is just for demonstration purposes and in two dimensions so that our brains can kind of process it. Ultimately, if we have a lot more information somehow about all of these words in higher dimensional space, in vectors that have a hundred dimensions, a hundred numbers. We can't visualize that so easily. There are interesting techniques for called dimension reduc reductionality, <laughs> reducing the dimensionality um, that we could then draw like word clusters and stuff and maybe I'll, I'll get to that later. But um, what I'm trying to say here is that we can establish sophisticated complex relationships between words in higher dimensional space. But in order to do that, it's useful to look at a single example that ties words to numbers in a low dimensional space that we can either visualize or sort of like put into our brains. And so i uh, kind of describe to you what word to vec is, what the model looks like when it's complete. I haven't looked at all about the training process, right? The animals example is hard coded. I'm gonna show you, I'm, I'm gonna do a port of one of Allison's examples of words associated, colors associated with numbers, right? A color, a word red is 255 comma zero comma zero. That's a word to a vector. Um, and that's gonna be from a data set. And then the third thing that I'm gonna do is look at what is traditionally thought of as word to vec these higher dimensional 
large, uh, large dictionaries of words and their associated vectors, those word embeddings. So that's going to be the journey here. Uh, I don't know how many videos it's going to be, three, four, five, 471, <laughs> something like that. And then at some point, I'll try to also do some projects with that. So in the next video, I'm going to do a port of Allison's project, which you can find uh, all in Python, all of the code in Python on that tutorial that's linked in the description. And I'm going to do a JavaScript uh, port of it. Okay, so I'll see you there. Maybe, or maybe not. Go read that page. It's, it's excellent. Okay, goodbye.